The freshwater moray eels' unique and intimidating look combined with their interesting personalities make them a must for many fish enthusiasts. However, there are some common misconceptions about this creature that ultimately and inevitably leads to them either frequently starving or dying due to various problems. I am going to highlight a few helpful tips in this video to regard their care. Let's start with some facts. The scientific name is Gymnothorax tile. I probably murdered that, but anyhow, is often what people are referring to when they reference a freshwater moray eel. This species has several different names, including Indian, mud moray, gold dust moray, and snowflake eel. It has a gray body that's covered in many golden yellow dots that are present along the lateral and dorsal sides. As these eels age, the dots become smaller and result in the eel appearing a solid gray color. The species commonly grows about 24 inches or 2 feet in length. This species is native to Indonesia in the Philippine Islands. Common Misconceptions the most common misconception about freshwater moray eels lie in its own name, the freshwater aspect. While it may be easy to see a moray eel being sold as a freshwater moray eel and assume that it's a species that's acclimated to living in freshwater, this isn't true at all. Almost every eel species that falls under the scope of freshwater moray eel needs to be kept in brackish or marine waters to stay alive. There are some exceptions, but those species aren't very common in the hobby. Well, Sean, why are they called freshwater then? Well, simply put, in reality, most freshwater moray eels simply enter freshwater for a few weeks for food to remove saltwater parasites and to spawn. After those tasks are complete, they return back to their natural saltwater environment. A common trend among first time owners is the struggle to get the eel to eat. While moray eels are very hardy creatures, they can survive a month or more without food. They're often kept in quarantine and in a store for multiple weeks without proper feeding. This can result in the moray eel quickly dying in your care if you cannot figure out how to properly feed them. The optimal diet <clears throat> consists of several kinds of frozen seafood. Mixtures of prawn fish, squid, mussel, flesh are all very healthy foods for your eel. This food should be cut into small safe pieces and fed with a pair of tweezers to make sure it's eaten. If your eel refuses to eat, there are a few things you can try to do. Firstly, turn off all the lights. This tends to help make the eel feel more confident in leaving its cave. Dangling the food right in front of its eyes will make the food extremely easy to spot and quite tempting to eat. And if those don't work, you might have to resort to feeder crustaceans and feeder fish. Tank requirements. A single eel should be kept in a 30 gallon tank. If you have more than one, it should be put in 60 gallons or bigger. Remember, bigger is always better in the fish world, no matter if we're talking about a guppy or a shark. One of the neatest traits about this fish can be your worst enemy. They are very, very curious. They like to explore, explore every crack, crevice, so a secured lid with no exit holes is a must. Well, Sean, now that I've been bamboozled into thinking I bought a freshwater fish, can I at least have tank mates with it? How about a puffer? Well, while some will hunt down and kill any living creatures in their tanks, others will gladly live in harmony with them, but it really depends on the fish. The only successful tank mates that have really been kept with eels are same species 
and certain crabs and turbo snails. But fish like tangs, mollies, archers, and scats almost always get eaten. And yes, some owners have tried to house their uh, freshwater moray eels with uh, common brackish puffer fish. However, some eels have died from this very thing. I'm not saying there aren't exceptions that happen. If you watch my channel a little at all, you'll know I'm bad for uh, breaking the rules, so to speak, and trying things that normally don't normally work out. But please be cautious. Please do your research. Well, if you clicked on my video, I'm guessing you already have one or you're looking to get one. And I hope I could have been of a great assistance to you and help you on your journey with your freshwater eel. Thanks, everybody. Like and subscribe if you found this helpful.